Hi, it's David Avram with the Customer Experience Advantage Podcast. On today's show, travel hassles. They've become an accepted part of getting from where you are to where you want to go. It is a fast-paced, hustle-bustle, do-or-die schlep with all your luggage and your stuff and your kids and the rest of your crap. But imagine a service that offered professional staffers to help you lighten the load and schlep all of that for you or with you. We are talking today with Julie Melnick of Sky Squad. It's the Customer Experience Advantage podcast, back in 20 seconds. You're listening to the Customer Experience Advantage podcast with David Averin, featuring candid conversations with some of the most influential leaders in business today. Sit back and listen in, or feel free to watch the video version online. This is the Customer Experience Advantage podcast, and here's David Averin. Hi, and welcome to the Customer Experience Advantage podcast. I'm David Averin. If you are watching this, the video version on YouTube or on my website, or of course, audio version everywhere, C-Suite Radio, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher, and Spotify, and everything else. Today's show is, I, you know, I one of the things I do when I'm interviewing people is I look for just great stories and great businesses and things that I think are brilliant and are a big deal or are going to be a big deal or capitalizing on certain trends. And I think today's is one that that um, I'm really interested in and really excited to talk about. So let me take you back to yesteryear. It's my Wayne's World taking you back to yesteryear, the flashback sequence. I remember we were young, we, we go to the airport and it was kind of a big deal. Not only did we dress up a little bit for it, but we take everybody pile in the station wagon and nobody was in seatbelts, of course. And we park at the airport and we go with grandma and they take us back. We go to the airport, we go inside, of course, the, uh, at the luggage counter, they would, well, first of all, the sky caps would help you with the luggage because we didn't have wheels in our luggage in those days. And they were very, very heavy. I didn't know because I wasn't carrying them. They check you in, they tag your bags and you, you go to the gate and, and you'd sit with grandma and sit with the family, maybe you grab something to eat. And then we'd have that tearful goodbye. We'd get on the plane and, and they would wait by that gigantic picture window at the gate of the airport and they would wave to us and we'd wave to them and they'd sniffle and grandma and grandpa would put her arm around each other and they head back to the car and we'd head out. The world has changed. Nobody does anything for you anymore. They drop you off. We have to say a quick curbside goodbye as the uh, police officers rush people along. Please, no parking too long. We'd schlep our own stuff. But we didn't have airport security in the day either. Anybody could go. It's kind of scary when you think back to how easy it was to do everything. But now it's like these Eddie Bauer multifunction car seats and complicated everything. I've been that dad. I've been that, that kid. I'm one of six and everything else. And today is hard. Today is arduous. Uh, for me as a business traveler, I'm lugging around boxes of books, but I watch the moms and the dads. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're single or they're together. There is this, this tension between them. The kids are crying. We're trying to get... Anyway, um, my guest today, Julie Melnick, has come up with a brilliant concept. One of those slap the forehead. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, her company is called Sky Squad, and she has people who will help you with all of that for a very reasonable fee in this time of do it yourself. She's there and her team is there to do it for you. Long introduction, Julie, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much for having me. What a great introduction. I love hearing your stories about your yesteryear and I can relate to how easy it used to be. And yeah, it is now a culture of do it yourself. You were asked. Yeah, so, so tell me what happened to you. First of all, your background, you, um. You're like a, a marketing genius. You were marketing director for Coldwell Banker in Orange County. You uh, helped roll out their tech products. You uh, you had the the predecessor, I think, of, of this model. Um, but you're also a part of a public relations firm and everything else. And sometimes it's that that promotional mind that says, you know what, there's a business in this somewhere. What was your own personal experience that drove this concept? And then I want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges along the way as well. Yeah, so um, thank you for that introduction. Yes, so my background is marketing and PR. And when I had my son and he was about two years old, I would travel frequently from California where I lived to Florida to see my mom and my sister and go to the beach. And I was traveling a lot and there's, there was this one particular time where I was carrying my really heavy car seat, my stroller, my diaper bag, my suitcase and my son, yeah. really squirmy at two years old, you know, squirmy and like wanted me to hold him and I had this car seat. And I asked the gate agent for help. I said, excuse me, you know, could you help me? I just need a little help getting to the gate. 
And he said, sorry, man, those are your own belongings. And I was completely on my own. And I felt so like frustrated and upset. And I almost started crying. I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get to the gate. You know, I have like so much stuff. Who, there's no one here to help me. And I looked around and I realized there were so many other people that probably could have used help too. But we we're all just kind of suffering through it and getting through it. I didn't need a wheelchair and I didn't really want to pay $300 for a VIP service. Right. But I really needed some help. You know, I needed a friend. And so I got on the plane and I looked around and I was like, there's got to be like, there's got to be a better way. You know, we have to come up with something. And I went home and we really started working on the first, the first iteration of, of Sky Squad, which was called Danny and the Pouts. And the Sorry, say, say that say that slowly so people can can hear yeah. what that was. It was Nanny in the Clouds. Yeah, that was the first concept. And it was very right. different than Sky Squad because the first concept was really designed for a peer-to-peer -peer kind of model where if I were if I was a mom looking for help, I could go on our Nanny in the Clouds website and look for another person flying the same place as oh, me. Oh, interesting. I could up with them and they could help me in the airport as well as in flight and then help me when we got there. So that was the original concept. And although we had a ton of great PR, we had PR, like every, you know, everyone was writing about us. Sure, it's a great story, yeah. It was a fun story. Um, we had over 4,000 people sign up to use the service, which was great, but we didn't have a geographical focus. And so we were, we had airports all over the world listed just to kind of see what traction we would get. So people were signing up in Sydney and London and Chicago and New York, and it was really great, but there weren't a lot, there weren't enough matches in the same airport to have actual traction. So after about two years of giving that everything I had and having a second baby and all that stuff, I decided to put it on hold while we moved back East for my husband's job. And I started a PR firm with a friend and all the while doing my PR business, I would get like it would requests for nanny in the clouds would come in waves and they would just keep coming and i just after time i just thought like this problem has not been solved i we still travel a ton it's still really hard there's no one helping moms and dads i need to do this like this is my passion i mean i'm just so passionate about it um i just feel so excited to work on it i love it it's just so fun for me and i just see such a big potential to really impact the travel industry in a positive way so I decided to really bring it back to life and we decided to refine the process so that it wasn't the same model. The, the old model didn't work. We needed to come up with a better model. So the old model, you had massive distribution. You just didn't have enough utilization to justify people couldn't get served because there weren't enough. It's, it's like starting a handyman service everywhere and you've got a lot of requests and two providers or right. not enough. And, it, and, it's, and it's too much to to manage. So, so what was your big learning and how did you, um, what was the modification you did in the second iteration? Yeah. So the biggest learning was we needed to start smaller in a more geographical location in a place that was close to where I was so that I could be there in person to kind of get it off the ground. And so the new iteration for Sky Squad was to use background checked and badged airport staff that are already in the airport to serve as the helpers. Love it, love start it. Start one location. So there, you know, it just made it so much easier. It's like, okay, we're gonna start in one airport and we're gonna use the people that are already there. We're gonna ask them to help. And if they are interested and they wanna make this work, then we really do have a viable business model. And they did. I mean, the people at the airport are usually, you know, the, the people that we hire are really friendly people. I know not everyone at the airport is friendly. But the people that we hire are airport ambassadors. They're there to help at the airport anyway. We hire airport volunteers that are there anyway. Some, some of our workers work for free at the airport. Um, for us, when they, when they work for us, they get paid. But we are looking for people that love helping people. And so there's plenty, you know, there's over 10,000, I don't know, something like 10,000 people that work at some of these airports. Right. So we can certainly find, you know, 20 to 30 that are awesome and they want to help others and they make money doing it it's great right so so from a proof of concept perspective it was sort of pulling back the reins a little bit uh circling the wagons refining that and saying okay what's going to work because it has the financial model has to work for you as a company you have to be profitable for the uh the passengers who who contract the service and i want to talk in a minute more about what specific services that you provide and what you're offering but those who are the actual staffers as well, it's got to make sense. And where I am in you know, south of Denver, I'm about an hour away from the airport. And that's my commute because I travel, of course. But it doesn't make sense to do that for that kind of a job necessarily. But the people who are already there. But the other one is, is, is you and I have a mutual friend in PJ Mastrakia with At Your Gate. And one of the things that he learned early on was 
it, it's a different environment, isn't it? At the airport, mm -hmm. it's not like you're at a shopping mall where anybody can go anywhere. They have to be credentialed. So mm -hmm. what a brilliant idea of taking people who are already credentialed at the, at the, uh, at the airport and have them work for you. So financially, it's got to work for everybody. So tell us a little bit more about the model itself. What is the service? What does it cost? And then I want to sort of get deeper into, um, into sort of this, this done for you model that, that we're seeing across other industries. Yeah, so the model works in such a way that the customers are paying $49 basically for a basic service. So if it's not a family, if it's a solo driver, a senior a pet owner, they're paying $49 for, for help basically from their car door to get into to the airport into their through security to their gate. Um, we have found that families generally take longer than one hour. So, so in order to make it you know, profitable for us and to make sense to pay our, our staff members, we charge them $99 from car door to plane door. And that gets us you know, the ability to have enough time to check them in, to get them through security, to help them to their gate, some wait time at the gate so that they can leave their stuff with us and take their kids to the bathroom or they can leave their stuff with us and they can get a snack or they can send us to get a snack. But the $99 is for families because we've just found that families take longer than an hour generally. Absolutely. Well, yeah. and, and we need to get there a little bit earlier to go through security and everything else. But listen, let me let me challenge you on something because I you've said this a million times um, for our listeners and our viewers, it's the first time. It, it, it sounds like it's just a very simple process, but it's not simple. I mean, that's the whole reason. It's not, it's a pain in the ass. You know, that sort of from, from the car to the gate through security, whatever. Let's stretch that out a bit and let's get a little more, more specific. Um, your people, when, they, when, they're, when they're contracted and they, and they communicate through text, to be clear. Yes. So the person will meet them. They'll help them unload all of that, right? And if you've got kids and you've got strollers and you've got, well, you say it because I, I'm sort of thinking from my own experience and I've not only watched it you know, a, a million times as I've flown almost 2 million miles, but I've been a part of that. So give me more of the specifics of the kinds of the challenges, um, the kind of challenges that families, that, that single parents, married parents, um, elderly, uh, foreign nationals and others as well with language issues and business travelers, some of the specific challenges as they, as let's, let's stress out our audience, shall we? As we go through the whole process, it is arduous at times. Yes. And it's, it's breaking it down. It's putting it back together. It's putting on the belt. It's holding the kids. Take us through all of that. Make us uncomfortable for the next 60 seconds. Yes. Okay. Well, first of all, COVID has made things way more uncomfortable because everyone coming to the airport these days, I, I just generally, is just extra nervous because of COVID. Number one, they're nervous about, you know, just the fact that there, there are people at the airport that who knows who has what. Right. Secondly, if they're flying internationally, there's a whole protocol for providing, you know, the, the negative COVID tests and all that. And, you know, nine times out of 10, someone forgot to sign something or something's missing or they can't find the right form and they're going into their phone. So it is, you know, safe to say that 100% of our customers are, are pretty like on edge. You know, they're all, they're all nervous because it's just like a new experience flying in, during COVID times. And so everyone's sure. a little uncomfortable. So having, having a Sky Squad team member meet you at your car is so assuring because you know you have sort of an, an ambassador to help you through the whole process, somebody to make sure everything's okay. And so that's- right. really and, in, and in most cases, they're not just saying, here, you do all of this. You're doing it together, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Mom or dad, we're holding the kid um, oh, yeah. or our, our, little, our little bundle of joy. But there's, there's the stroller and the, all the different things as well. And everybody's got a different situation. But take us through that kind of a scenario. What role does the Sky Squad employee, and what do you, what do you call them, um, your employees? We're squad. I mean, there okay, are squad. squad. Okay. We call them helpers. We kind of go back and forth between helpers and the squad. because right. they're really so, so, so the squad, what are they doing? Um, and, and take us through the whole thing, all the way through checking in, tagging bags, everything. What do yeah, they so do? What do they not do? The process starts really before the day of travel. So we are sending them confirmations, you know, days before travel, the day of travel, 15 minutes before the arrival time. So if you have like an 8 a.m. flight we're, and you're coming with your wife and kids, we're meeting you at the airport at 6 a.m. Right. So 5.45, our, our helper will send you a text to say, hi, my name's Julie, I'm, you know, from the squad. I'm here at the airport waiting for you. Please let me know what kind of car you're coming in so that we can make sure to greet you at your car. Most of our customers come in Uber, so we don't know what kind of car they're coming in until like sure, 10. sure. So they'll say, okay, I'm in a you know 
black SUV, um, ETA is seven minutes away, or I'm running late. A lot of our customers are running late. And so they give us an idea of when they're coming and we are, we are there waiting for them. We, we make sure that we're in front of the door that matches up with the airline that they're flying. So once they arrive at the airport, we're greeting them with a big smile under our mask. And we're saying hello and we're you know, asking how we can be helpful. And we're helping them get their luggage out of the car mainly. Um, we help the driver, usually it's the driver helping and we're helping, we're, we're introducing ourselves to the kids. We're helping to carry a car seat. We're helping to carry a stroller. You know, We're just kind of getting everything in line and making sure we could go in safely. The nice thing right now is that it's pretty empty at the airport. So right. it's not like we're battling traffic. It's, it's a different experience. It's not like the typical- right. But there's also some shelf life for this interview as well. And there will, there will come a time, depending on when you're watching or listening to this, yes. that there is, there is a, a busier experience. Exactly. So it's interesting during COVID times because it's a little bit, it, the stressors are different than they typically are, but they're still there. You know, that's the thing. So um, we get you inside to check in your, you know, your bag. And so the Sky Squad helper is basically the one leading the way, guiding you to the right place to go, and then lifting the bags onto the scale. And that tends to be a really stressful thing, especially for when it's, when moms are traveling solo. Right. They're generally like, like this weekend. We you got to put, you got to put things down to lift other things up. Exactly. You have a baby on your chest, you have a toddler that's chatty, and you have like five 70 pound bags to put on the scale. It's a lot for one person. So the Sky Squad helper can do that. They have, they're lifting the bag so the mom can kind of find the COVID test or find the, the documents that they need to provide so that they're not doing everything at once. Um, and a lot of times when, you know, just in the, in the customers I've helped over the past year, it's just you wonder how could they do it without us? I mean, it's the, that's the kind of experience we're having. We're like, we don't know, we don't know how you would have done this without us. Right. We are so glad we could be here to help you today. Well, and, and you look at sort of uh, conveniences that we've come to enjoy. You know, I get my groceries delivered. I'd never done that before. I am yes. never going back. It is oh, awesome. There's no need so, to do that anymore. Yeah, this kind of a thing as well. So I think once, I, I would assume that your retention is pretty strong for people who do it once and they want you know, we definitely have had some repeat customers. You know, I I feel that in this time, most of the customers that are using us are traveling as much as they typically would be in a normal right. year. Right. So that that'll pick up as travel picks up. Okay. So so take us back uh, to the, so the yes, travel we're experience. The luggage on the scale. We're making sure the luggage has tags. We're writing the per, the, the customer's name and, and phone number on the tags to make sure everything's set. So the, the customer really doesn't have to lift a finger. All the customer really has to do is make sure that they can provide their passport or their license or whatever they need to do. We're taking care of everything. Right, they're, they're taking mental inventory of they're their checklist, them. right? They're, they're the ones going, okay, got this, you got this, you got the, the ticket, you got the passport, you got the whatever else, you right? You know, we've definitely been in situations where the customer says, can you please hold our tickets? And it's like, yes, because that's all we have to hold. We don't come with purses and things like that. Well, right, well here's, the, here's the question. I'm going to be the voice of, of the listener right now. What about holding babies? I mean, I'll tell personally on a personal level, despite as scary as I look, I am the baby whisperer. So there are times when I'll say, listen, can I hold? And sometimes they'll look at me and sure. And then they're like, um, sure, can you? And I'm like, and the kid stops crying and they stare at my beard and like, what is he? Right. Yeah. So do do your 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 squad members sometimes will hold children if they're comfortable? Yes. Kind of thing we as well. have situations. Yes, absolutely. We we have worked with parents that have a baby in the baby carrier. They need to take the baby out of the baby carrier in order to go through security or whatever it may be, or to feed the baby. And we are, our, our staff members are very well trained. All of us, all of them have child care experience. They all know that they are expected to be comfortable with children. And the one thing that we don't do is we don't take, we don't take kids to the bathroom. If a parent needs to take a kid to the bathroom, they right. take them to the bathroom. I, I assume there's some lines. I, I assume your, your people yeah. are not breastfeeding. Um, the children, they're not changing diapers, we're not changing diapers. things, no, things that are, we, we draw the line at intimate. Um, for our listeners, we're talking to Julie Melnick from Sky Squad. And the website, if you want to look it up while we're doing all this is theskysquad.com, T-H-E, theskysquad.com. So once they get now, let's talk about, about security, because that's yeah. going through TSA is a challenge for those of us by ourselves, um, I, we don't have to imagine what it's like with kids because it's either been us or we've been witness to all of that. Right. How do you make that easier for them? 
we make it so much easier for them by, first of all, just being the voice of calm, reassuring our customers, okay, this is what's going to happen. Do you have liquids? Let's talk about what kind of, which bag has the bottles? You know, when we're with a parent with a baby, we know there's bottles, we know there's baby food. So we'll say, you know, which bag has the baby, you know, do you have baby food with you or anything? Let's take that out and make sure that's in a separate area. So we'll help them open up, un, there's a lot of zippers in these diaper bags. So we're helping them right. unzip the diaper bag, we're helping them get the things out, we put them in the tray, we're lifting the trays up, putting them on the, the belt. So all they really have to do is take off their shoes, take off, you know, take off, take out their laptop or show us how to take out their laptop. And then we're helping um, take out the car seat. If there's a car seat, we're asking the TSA member if we need to take apart the stroller. Sometimes they actually make you take the wheels off of the right. stroller. So that it fits oh. through. And all that stuff is very stressful when you have a line behind you. Well, I was going to say this, and it's also stressful for the people behind them. Right. Uh, you know, one of the worst airport in America for those of us who are and and for those of you who are not frequent travelers, don't be bitter at the rest of us who seem a little overly impatient. But it's like being in Orlando. It's just it's the worst. Um, and because because there's so many families. Right. And it's such a challenge. So I would assume that you guys are superheroes to the travelers behind these families as well. They have to yeah. love you. Yes, they do. They love us. And they're, they're just so happy to see some support for these families because they really need it. I mean, I think that's really the most eye-opening thing, uh, learning experience from this whole situation is that this has just been an overlooked population for so long, the, the group of families and even pet owners. Pet owners are another group that's been helping a lot lately that we did not even see that coming. We didn't even imagine we'd be helping pet owners. So anytime you have extra stuff that you... That's for people with their emotional support donkey on, yeah, on the airplane yeah, and support... Have. Emotional support reptiles, give me a break. Anyway, but I digress, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, the people that have two kittens, you know, we've just had requests recently, it's so funny, people were really worried about traveling with their kittens and we were talking to them about it. Why, and they, why? And also, can, I, can I pause, can I pause? Why are you traveling with your kittens? You know, a lot of, fam we help a lot of moving families. And so- Okay, all right, I'll, gi I'll give you that, I'll give you that one. You know what I mean? They're, they're yes. getting the plane because they're moving their family. And they, You're they much more understanding than I am, but yes, keep going. So anyway, so getting through security is our biggest pain point. I yeah, think sure. level, if you can measure the stress of our customers before security and after security, it always goes down so much. I mean, the, the tension in the air for our customers just is always so much lower after security because I think everyone's nervous that they will have to, you know, give up some liquid or something that they want. They, you know, nobody you know, everyone has a little bit of stress going through security. And they feel the pressure of the people behind them as well. And we feel, and we, we do, we, we do have sympathy. We feel bad for it, but we're all just trying to get where we're going. So right. your people are, you know, they're superheroes, they're helpers, they're pressure release valves right. for these families. Really, yeah. To reassure, we reassure our customers throughout the whole process. We also have these great hand sanitizers that are really easy to, they're like credit cards. We spray everybody's hands throughout the process. So everybody feels cool. like germ free. And you know, we've been through security so many times. We, you know, a lot of times we'll, you know, we can just reassure the, the, the mom or dad that, you know, this is, this is normal. You know, a lot of, a lot of our customers are first time flyers or haven't flown in a while or haven't flown with a baby before. They're right. Well, so well, that's the other thing. Let me pause for a second. Why? I, another reason is I continue to stroke you about how brilliant all of this is, is that you have a self-replicating audience, don't you? It's, it's what I call it in one of my books, I called it the Sesame Street syndrome. The reason Sesame Street can stay on the air because every year, last year's five-year-olds um, who are now six-year-olds are replaced by another crop of five-year-olds and people are still having babies. And, and every month there's a new crop of people who have not gone through this before. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's almost like you need a Sherpa, um, you know, that to, I mean, that's what you are. You're Sherpas, aren't you? You're airport yeah. Sherpas helping yeah. us scale Everest with uh, <laughs> supplies for, for two weeks and everything else. I mean, so many images come to mind. Yes. Yes. No, it's so true. And I think, you know, these moms that have never flown with their three or six month old or whatever, they don't like, you know, when the agent is testing the bottle with the, the you know, they have these chemicals they, and it's just, it's total, you know, it's normal. And uh -huh. that's Done. And so we reassure them that that's just what they have to do and it's fine. And I think that eases their stress and then they get through and then they're on the other side. What we'd like to do after that is we help them kind of repack everything up. You know, they have a lot of things taken out of their bags. We take minutes at the table. We help them repack. We help give the kids some water. We help do whatever we need to that's do. That's awesome. Yeah. And then we can regroup and get to our gate and everybody's just more relaxed. 
and they didn't suffer through it. It's like they did it with a guide and with support. So it wasn't a terrible experience. It was right. fine. So the, so the at the gate experience is different than it was 20 years ago now be, for a couple of reasons. Number one is, is you're still waiting by yourself and everything else, but you can't. I mean, there was a time when we used to say this was, this is the grocery store version in the airport of, oh my gosh, I'm in line. I forgot something at the grocery store. Would you watch my cart? Right. And you run a, you can't say that at the airport gate anymore. Right. You can't say, watch my bag right. um, for, for our kids. It's always kind of been that way. No, not for us. Um, right. Somebody said, can you watch my bag for a second? I'm going to hit the restroom where you're going. You can't leave anything. And then you lost your seat or you right. lost your seat next to one of the very rare um, electrical outlets. Right. You don't want to do that. No. Yeah. Right. All right. So here, I'm going to ask you really quickly. So, so, but, so they help with, watching the kids and everything else so you can do all the things do you guys offer because maybe i'm giving you a super idea that you're going to go uh we already do that do you offer portable electronic chargers for your people you don't that's a great idea there you go like every every sky squad member is is armed with a multi-plug power strip I see love now they're now yeah. they're heroes okay that will be ten thousand dollars please there's your, there's your idea the thing but Think about all those kinds of things as well. But but I was thinking about somebody, they 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 nailed a seat and it's next to the pole that right. has um, the electrical outlet or something. Yeah. You can't leave to go eat. You can't leave one of your kids to take the bathroom. You have to take your luggage with you to the bathroom. Yeah. And I'm not telling anybody anything that you don't already know. How does your team, your squad alleviate that? Yeah, I think that is a, a really big pain point for people that we help. Big with. pain point. When we get you to your gate, we navigate, we help you navigate to the gate. I think a lot of people, especially now through big airports like Dulles, it's overwhelming, especially it if you're on, a, you're on a layover. We help a lot of layover customers that are landing from like Chicago or LA and then going somewhere else. We help them, you know, figure out, are we taking the train? Are we taking the people mover? Are we just walking through the hall? So we're, we're guiding them to their gate. Are you guys running if they have to run? We surprisingly have run before, yeah. I missed a connection at Dulles because I had to run and run and they were just closing the door and they wouldn't open it. Yes. So in those situations, which are rare, your people will run with them too? We run. We have run. We have run. That's and awesome. It surprises, it surprises us how sometimes people really do cut it close. We really we recommend yeah. two hours before domestic, three hours before um, international. But some people just really, they think they're pros that traveling and they don't need to get there early and then they're just running in the end so yeah. really and the, con the connection is oftentimes the hardest I'm, I'm actually traveling internationally tomorrow and i've got to make on the way back a, an international connection in an hour right and, well it has to happen so do you yeah. guys do that as well meet people and help them make the connections yeah. that's a we great do. we do and it's really especially important for senior travelers when they're, you know, they don't need a wheelchair, but they want a buddy to, to keep them company at the airport. So we'll get a call from their like adult child, 40 or 50 year old child, you know, adult child that says, hey, my mom's flying in on a connection from Chicago. She's meeting us in Boston. Can you keep her company at the airport for an hour? And love, that. love that. And the best it, thing about that is we're texting the, the person, the loved one who booked and said, hey, we have your mom, you know, we're here at the gate and we're in, in touch. So it's not, you know, right. is this working, you know? So getting, all right, that was, I think it was a lot in the surface. I think people are getting a good sense of that. <clears throat> Talk to me about um, the environment being such that people are really open and welcoming to services like this. I think we've, and I've spoken a lot about the fact that we've sort of seen this interesting shift where you look at, uh, if you remember Back to the Future, right? There's that, that great scene at the beginning where he goes back to his town square and a car pulls into the parking lot and it's immediately attacked by staff. One of them opens the hood and checks his oil. Another one washes the windows. Another one checks the air in his tires. The other one's pumping his gas. And we laugh. And, you know, for, for us, that was Thursday. And for our kids, that's who does that, right? But we've also seen a shift to, to so much do it yourself. We go yeah. to the airport, we have to tag our own bags and we have to pump our own gas. It's not that it's a big deal, but it adds up. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing a shift at the same time, like even groceries, we have to tag or, you know, scan our own groceries or whatever else. And I hate it because I'm horrible because every item is an unexpected item in the bagging area, just saying. 
But we're also seeing like a complete pendulum swing on the other end, which is completely done for you model. If you're willing to pay for it, we'll do it all for you. Like yeah. getting your groceries shopped and delivered and everything else. This is very much along those lines. Yeah. Um, what is the acceptance and the feedback that you've gotten? Where are you now? And what's the expansion plan for this? Yeah, um, so I agree with you. It's really a culture at the airport of yourself, and we really want to change that so that people feel more comfortable coming to the airport. We want to empower people that may not have taken the trip if their husband couldn't go with them or if they've never flown before. We've helped recently several, you know, 50 something first time flyers before. Wow. Um, and it's just so, it's so rewarding to help these people because they literally don't know how to, they'll have, they have a boarding pass. I mean, I saw, I was with one of them and it was just so mind boggling. He had a boarding pass. He didn't know how to scan it because he never flew before. He didn't know where to put the boarding pass. To Were scan they wearing it. like monk outfits or something? No, or totally they normal. From Tibet? Totally normal, regular everyday person that just had never gotten on a plane. So there's just so many groups of people that really do um, need support at the airport. And there just hasn't been a service developed yet. And we are that service. And we are so excited about the feedback because people need us. And we feel really good about it because, you know, in this crazy time of living during and after a pandemic, now that everyone's getting vaccinated, we believe that we can provide a tool to both airports and airlines to empower people to, to travel and give them confidence to travel again. Um, where, where are you providing the service today? I know that you're sort of in your infancy in terms of the rollout for this new iteration. Yes. But you've got big plans as well. Tell us about that. Yes, yes. So we are currently at Dulles, Reagan, and Cincinnati airports. Okay. We do have plans to expand um, to several more airports. We're working on expanding in the Northeast corridor down to Florida. And so we're talking to several of the airports in the Northeast, several, I'd rather not say exactly which ones, but they're, sure. they're big, big airports in the Northeast. They're great big airports in Florida. And we're really excited because we, you know, we've traveled to Florida often in the winter to just find a warm beach. And so we want to make sure that we're available at both ends of that, those trips for people when they fly down to Florida. And we want to also expand out West as well. So we're really, we have big plans, we have big dreams, and we see this as a concept that really can only improve the travel experience. Have you seen um, an experienced acceptance? Uh, I know others who've done things within the airport environment who uh, experience some resistance internally with a new model because it is that city under a structure, because their security is such a big issue. Um, mm -hmm. There was some um, initial pushback and who's going to go where and whatever else. Mm -hmm. um, are you, what's your feedback from the, uh, the airport entities themselves who will have to green light this kind of a service internally? Are you seeing uh, much more openness because others have blazed that trail? Yeah, it's really interesting. I, we've seen, we've been seeing a lot of openness and a lot of, we've gotten calls from airports recently to say, hey, we're interested, you know, let's talk, yeah. which is so awesome. And we're so excited about that. There it, are some airports, yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. there are some airports that are a little more hesitant because it's a newer model and they want to make sure, you know, that it works within their parameters of what they do. But I think as they see the success in the airports that we're in and that we're going to, I think it will help us get into those airports, the few airports sure. that we're in. It, what, what's the, uh, the the revenue model from the airport's perspective? Are they charging you for access as part yeah. of that? Are you literally creating a model that they're unaware of and, and you're still feeling all that out? They get a percentage of monthly revenue. Okay. And it's and it varies. It's a negotiable kind of thing, but yeah, they get a percentage. So so everyone's motivated for the success of the company. You know, they're going to make money. We're we're our you know as our volume increases, so does theirs. So do so does theirs. So we really do want to use all of the potential marketing opportunities we have at each airport to raise awareness. Right now, we are really um, you know word of mouth. We're we're you know finding customers through our social media posts and things like that. And we'd like to um, you know. And, and, our, and our physical presence when we have our staff members at sure. the airport, like we were talking about before the, before the show started, really having that physical presence, I think, is a big piece of our success. All right, crystal ball. Let's look ahead a year from now, five years from now. Um, what does the company look like? You know, there, there, there's always this push towards rapid expansion, but you saw what happened with the last iteration. But then there's also somebody else who says that's a great idea. What's your, what's your plan for proving out the concept quickly and, uh, and doing that, that expansion in a way that really locks up this territory for this, for this concept? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I think we do want to focus on rapid expansion, especially in this environment, because we want to make sure that we can help as many people as possible. We see the need for the service. We see people struggling and 
we want to get to as many airports as we can. So this year, our goal is seven airports by the end awesome. of the year. Um, once we've done that, we plan to expand to many, many more. And in five years, we plan to be everywhere. I mean, there, we don't. Talk, no talk to me real quickly before we're done here. Once again, talking to Julie Melnick from Sky Squad. Um, what what additional services have you been ideating? You know, the one that comes to mind. And I don't. And if there's any trade secrets, you don't have to talk about anything. But I like talking about everything. Uh, I mean, do you have a service that will will take people from point A to point B, uh, escorting them on flights? Um, somebody who needs uh, almost a, a, a mother's helper, a girl Friday, father's helper, whatever else with the kids, escorting an, an elderly parent, um, literally from the fl from one city to another and coming back. Is, is, that, is that feasible for something like that? Because you know there's people that would pay for it. Yeah, I think there's definitely people that would pay for it, I think, here and there. But I think our real focus for the foreseeable future will be to really get SkySpot up and running in every airport that we can so that we can continue to refine the process and make it as you know, wonderful as possible for each and every customer. The customers that we, we meet are struggling the most in the airport. Once they're on the plane, generally they, they're, 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 they're good. They have flight attendants, they have, they have what they need, but in the airport, it really is you know, every man for himself. And so we do want to focus on providing that support in the airport. I don't think there's a viewer or a listener right now who would disagree with any of that. Um, and I think many are eager to uh, to see that expansion. That's great. If people want to get in touch with you who want to be involved, who want to uh, come work for you or have yeah. other questions, where do they find you? Well, they can always go to our website, which is www.theskysquad.com. You can always email us at info at theskysquad.com. Um, you can email me personally, Julie at the skyspot.com. And we have great Instagram at skyspot now. Perfect. Great. Hey, thank you for being with us. I think this is, I think we're, we're going to reconnect in about a year for a follow-up podcast. And we're going to talk about all the great success. Uh, hopefully this, this is, uh, really buzzworthy for everybody else. Big thanks to Julie, uh, Julie Melnick from Sky Squad and, a reminder that this podcast is sponsored in part by the Customer Experience Advantage Huddle. You know, some of your most innovative solutions to your biggest customer facing challenges are likely found within the creative minds of your own people. Let me lead that morning huddle conversation with your team each week. I'll give you the content. I'll give you the, I'll challenge your thinking. You can learn more about membership in this powerful internal initiative by visiting customerexperienceadvantage.com. All of my books, of course, are available on Amazon. Why Customers Leave was one of the top 10 in Forbes a year ago or so. And my brand new book is called The Morning Huddle, Powerful Customer Experience Conversations to Wake You Up, Shake You Up, and Win More Business. Those are available everywhere. Be sure to click to like this podcast, subscribe, leave your comments below, and click on the little bell to receive notifications, new episodes. And of course, you can learn more about my in-person speaking. I'd love to come and speak for you anywhere in the world. Talk customer experience at davidaverin.com. Thanks for tuning in to the Customer Experience Advantage podcast. Check out past episodes. Be sure to leave a comment. Big thanks to my guest, Julie Melnick. I'm David Averin. Be good. This has been the Customer Experience Advantage podcast with David Averin. Feel free to leave a comment and be sure to hit the thumbs up button you can listen to past episodes and be notified of future ones by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. David's popular marketing and customer experience books are available in print, as well as Kindle and audiobook, and published in multiple languages around the world. You can stay connected and learn more at davidaverin.com. Thanks for tuning in.